Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Exalt, let them exalt the host of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her. Ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing and end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire Banish the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin 
leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. O wonder of your humble care for us, O love, O charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O happy fault that turned so great, so glorious, our Redeemer. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners. O truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of peace, and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere untimed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these the last days has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. I would ask you now to blow out your candles and just to hold them until the altar service go around and pick them up.
Just hold the candles for a moment, and then we can ask you to sit down for the readings. Wait until they get the baskets first. You may sit down for the readings. The first reading is a reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water from above the dome the water below. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God, <clears throat> God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures. And on the earth, let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was and God blessed them saying, be fertile, multiply and fill the water of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, 
and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, be fertile and multiply. All fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all, all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Let us 
us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who are wonderful in ordinance all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The third reading is a reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff and, with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now dark, be now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. The Moses, Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so it turned into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land. With the water, like a wall to their right and to their left, the Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of the Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped, but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered. into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. He is my God, I praise him, 
the God of my Father, I extol Him. Let us sing to the Lord, He has covered Himself in glory. The Lord is a warrior, Lord is His name. Pharaoh's chariots and army He hurled into the sea. The elite of His officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord, He has covered Himself in glory. The flood waters covered them, they sank into the depths like a pray, O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing from Paro's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth, grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. The fifth reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well, you shall delight in rich fare. Come to me headfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, you sh so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, 
and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it, the word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, brothers and sisters. Are you unaware that we who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. For if we have grown in union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. Word of the Lord. Wonderful, wonderful 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At daybreak, on the first day of the week, the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. When they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground they said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has been raised. Remember what he said to you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and rise on the third day and they remembered his words then they returned from the tomb and announced all these things to the eleven and to all the others the women were Mary Magdalene Jonah and Mary the mother of James the others who accompanied them also told this to the apostles, but their story seemed like nonsense, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, bent down and saw the burial cloths alone. Then he went home amazed at what had happened the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we made it this far. When I look back over the last three years, I was wondering if Satan was going to get his way with the COVID. Over those two years especially, it looked very grim at times. I've often said Mass in this church on my own and the live stream. But thank God he has not got his way. Alleluia. When you read the account that Luke gives us, the women came to the tomb, they found the stone rolled away, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. Why do you seek the living among the dead? They ask. Then they returned from the tomb and announced these things to the eleven. But their story, it says, seemed like nonsense. And they did not believe them. Peter went to the tomb, bent down and saw the burial cloths, then went home in amazement, we're told. After the past three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Recalling our Savior, Jesus Christ, the road that he took to Calvary, now we come to the resurrection. And Luke's account tells us again, the, so the story seemed like nonsense. Peter went home amazed. 
But who is Jesus Christ? Who is he? We begin at the door this evening with a paschal candle lighting. And the words that we said, Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all times belong to him and all the ages to him be glory and power through every age and forever amen is what we said we were bringing the light of christ into the darkness of this church again the alpha and the Omega are etched into the candle. No beginning, no end. We're telling before we ever came into the church who Jesus Christ is. Now, in this most sacred time, the Easter vigil it was with great pleasure. Now we must tell the one who lost the battle of darkness over light. We do that by now blessing the water. Remember, water gives life. Water we use for washing, we use it to drink, and we use it to bless. After I bless the Easter water tonight, I'll ask you a few questions to make sure, to make sure you understand that evil has lost the battle that we went through up to now, Thursday, Friday, and now the vigil Saturday. Death has no more power over Jesus Christ. This is the highlight of our faith, the vigil. We celebrate Jesus Christ risen, never again to die. As we now go over and bless this water, and tonight in a special way, as that water hits you, you thank Almighty God for the gift of life, the gift of faith, and the gift of his grace and mercy to all of us. That's worth saying hallelujah, isn't it? Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be a spring among us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us that we may remain faithful to the spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people who keep visual on this most sacred night. And for us who recall the wondrous work of creation and still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to fresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, 
For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed a new covenant. You were to enter upon the human race, and at last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bat of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Now, before I go through the church, let me ask a few questions. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. I do. Do you believe in God the Father, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
us now. Raise our hearts and our minds to our Heavenly Father as we bring the needs before him. For the Church, may Christ continue to bless her with all she needs to bring his love to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and justice in our nations and across the world, may he who has risen dwell in the hearts of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with loneliness, isolation, or despair, may Jesus, the divine physician, bring them comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may we be united in hope and joy of faith on this Easter solemnity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they experience today the fullness of life in Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. The Mass intentions today are offered up for all parishioners, both living and deceased. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray now in a special way tonight for those who find it difficult to have faith, those that we know who are struggling with their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also continue to pray for peace in the world, especially in Ukraine and in Russia and surrounding area. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We just pause now for a moment in the silence of your own hearts. Heavenly Father, you see into the hearts of each one present in this church and those who are listening and watching on the airwaves. We bring all our prayers tonight in a special way before you. And we ask the intercession of Saint Joseph and the Blessed Mother as we say the Hail Mary together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your Except we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has been in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power Bring us the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover 
has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he destroyed our debt, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. For most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Edgar, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, we pray for our living. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for their redemption and for their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and praying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night, of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul and Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion and the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, O Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to you glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, the pure victim, the holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a sincere and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just. The sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. We humble prayer, we ask you almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Remember also your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace, we pray for our dead. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in your fellowship, with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and with all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company 
not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them and fill them with life and bless them and bestow them upon us. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. No, you can leave it. I'll just go on my own. I'll go on my own. Uh, no. This is Jesus, the risen Lord, the healer. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. It should enter my life, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O virgins of virgins, our mother. To you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions. But in your mercy, hear and answer them. Amen. O Mary, conceived without sin, may the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment 
in all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Mass Announcements. Wednesday, April 20th, from 6 to 8 p.m., a sister from St. Faustina's congregation will give a talk during the Divine Mercy Holy Hour. It will be a special evening. All are invited to attend. Next Sunday, April 24th, Divine Mercy Sunday, there will be a holy hour concluding with Divine Mercy Chaplet beginning at 2 p.m. in the church. There will be a healing mass on Thursday, April 21st at St. Andrews, Rose, St. Andrews, Rosary and Confessions at 6 p.m., Mass at 6.30 p.m., benediction and healing prayers to follow. Confirmation rehearsal next Sunday, April 24th, after the 10.30 Mass, attendance and mandatory for candidates and their sponsors. The Knights of Columbus are offering a scholarship to a graduating high school senior who meets the qualifications, now accepting applications through June 30th. Forms are available at the entrances. Thank you to all who gave so generously to the Special Ukraine Relief Collection. To date, we have collected a total of $4,770. Thank you. Please remember to share the bulletin with family and friends all the upcoming events going on in our parish, especially during this Lenten season. Thank you. Lent is over, my friend. <laughs> Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by the Paschal Sacrament, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we read the Gospel tonight, we saw how those who followed Jesus were just not able to take it all in. They were very slow. And I suppose, in a way, we've been slow as well. But we don't hold that against the Apostles nor does he hold it against us. To be here in a church on this vigil, the holiest night of the year, is a tremendous blessing. Regardless of your past, to be here tonight in a church celebrating this most beautiful evening of Jesus' resurrection. Thank God, not where we've been, but where we're going. Amen? Amen. May Almighty God bless you through today, Easter Solemnity, and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his holy begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended now. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. After all that, God bless each one of you.